I did want to yeah. make a mention for the doctors that are listening in. Um, it was at my own volition that as of November, I went off all supplements. The only thing I've been on is uh, my testosterone pellets, as well as a 2.5 dose systolic for mildly increased blood pressure, which is probably related somewhat to the job um, and lifestyle and everything else. So uh, Jeff was aware of this. I don't think Jeff's going to be able to join tonight, but I wanted to make sure everybody's aware that a lot of what you're seeing tonight is not under his guidance. But I really wanted to go back and see what my baseline zero looked like with no supplementation. And then my plan after tonight is to follow Jim's instructions to the letter and then do a recast and see what it looks like in four months. We're good. Okay, great. So the first thing I want to mention is, guys, is that we've got a whole library of cases that we review. And typically, the average case takes about 20 minutes. So when you're reviewing a case, if this report doesn't help you consolidate the amount of time that you have, then I'm not doing a good enough job of teaching you how to interpret this report. It should really help you to condense things. Now, Patrick's agreed to let me be as, uh, to be the guinea pig for tonight, and that's great. Uh, I think Patrick's a perfect example of just how complex somebody can get um, with their chemistry. And his his bio, you know, if you'll look at his hormones, his hormones are pretty optimized. You know, probably uh, probably at the early stage of getting his pellets. But when you look at his case, you really start to see. Um, you know, a, a lot that's going on. And so, Patrick, do you want me to go through the questionnaire, or would you rather I just go through the summary? Because I'm going to share all those things you're answering, and it builds to where the problem is. So it's up to you. However you would do a normal consultation. Well, okay. So I'm going to go through the questionnaire real quickly. And uh, if, if so the purpose of the questionnaire is for you, you guys to get an idea quickly of what's going on with the individual. And you can scroll through this quickly, and you can see. So um, Patrick has more than one or two glasses of wine. He's under chronic stress, uh, does have some anxiousness or anxiety. I guess, Patrick, is it mainly just chronic stress, or do you actually feel anxious at times? I wake up at about 2 o'clock in the morning with anxiety attacks. So, so we know that Patrick's nervous system is pretty, you know, pretty pro-sympathetic uh, uh, tone. And so the next thing is, is what about this, Patrick? You got tested for the MTHFR gene SNP. So that's, uh, you, you've known about that for a while. And then, yeah, and then uh, the rest I'm of just... these questions are really, you're kind of answering no, other than you have a beta blocker that you take. So that's like two point five. Yeah, and so we've got, you know, we've got, you're on some med for your blood pressure. Now the blood pressure you sent me, um, I added into the into this questionnaire uh, so that you'll see it on the report, and then your heart rate as well uh, is also added into the uh, into the report. So let's keep going here and see what else comes up. Uh, you get headaches if you go too long without eating, or 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 they are relieved by sweets and alcohol or alcohol. So is that does that happen very often? Um, maybe every other day. Every other day, so pretty much, then you may have trouble with, with regulating your blood pressure. You got to get there's a, a uh, echo backdrop on this. Julie, you've got to mute Julie Seymour. Hey, there we go. Perfect. Uh, and then getting tired after you eat a big meal. Does that happen fairly regularly too? Oh uh, yeah. So you know now we know that that, that you know uh, Patrick gets your blood sugars probably trending up and and that your uh, we know from your biometrics that your weight is um, over ideal uh, and then how many cups of coffee do you drink a day um, I start the morning with a very large green uh, probably three cups of coffee large green iced tea and probably one or two more before noon before noon okay so a fair amount of caffeine. Uh, and, and all of this you'll be reviewing before you even, so for guys, when you're doing this, you'll review this questionnaire before Patrick even sits down. But I just kind of want to get, you know, you guys, for the sake of seeing where the report is going to go, I want you to see these answers. Uh, Short-term memory worse than it used to be? I'm sorry? <laughs> is your short-term memory worse than it used to be? Right, exactly. Yeah. What would you say again? I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. I seem to forget words that I should know. Yeah, and is that recent, or is that something that you've always done? No, a couple last two or three months, probably. Okay. And then, 
feeling overcommitted throughout the day, and then we already talked about feeling like there's too much stress. Um, and then what about eating 50% or more of your calories after 5 p.m.? Do you find that you eat, you graze eat at the time you get home and you won't stop? No, we just eat really late. I don't eat a lot during the day. I eat very late, actually. I eat very well for breakfast and lunch, and then dinner is my big meal. Okay. All right. And uh, handshake and tremble. Yes. Okay. And then your heart rate uh, at uh, 90 beats a minute or above at rest. So in your questionnaire or in, in your heart rate, you were at 85 or so uh, when you took it. It's not a morning heart rate, but in general, you know your heart rate's up over 80 pretty consistently? Yes. It is. Okay. And let's keep going. Let's see. Uh, belch, burp frequently, and then feel full for an extended period of time afterwards, after eating? Yes. Okay. And then stomach pain worse with emotional duress or upset? Yes. Okay. All right. So these are all, so if you look, guys, these are all things that Patrick's answering yes to. So we know that he's under excessive stress. We know that his body is he's dysglycemic because of his response. Um, we have a, a, an idea that he's becoming somewhat of a vascular pack, right? Because he's under stress, he's overweight, his blood pressure's up, his heart rate's up, he's losing vagal tone. So these are the things you're thinking when you, when you, you, know, when you answer these questions. Um, breathe through the mouth. Uh, so, you, so you were told you had apnea as well. Correct. And do you use a, a nasal, uh, you use a, a CPAP machine? or a BiPAP machine or? I was ordered one, I just can't use it. I find sleeping on my side, I don't need it. All right. Hogwash! <laughs> I agree. I love, the, uh... group, I love these group inputs now, man. <laughs> Thank you, Doreen. That was good. <laughs> Jim, I could not help myself. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so, you know, sleep is a problem. You're waking up at 2.30 in the morning. Um, we know that that means that your sympathetic drive is like, Honestly, this is where... Jim, you're breaking up. ...period of time. But eventually it starts to filter down into kind of the cardiopulmonary or the cardiopulmonary neurovascular network where you're, where you're really starting to lose control of, you know, kind of your well-being. I mean, yeah, that your, your numbers are significant. Um, you know, obviously we talked about the sleep. And so I think we get the picture now. I mean, I can, I can move on from here and get to it, but you do have ringing and buzzing in your ears. Your blood pressure still is a little bit elevated, even being on medication. Um, and uh, you cough often, have to clear your throat, but you are a smoker, right? Correct. Yeah. So you know, obviously, the you know vascular issues around smoking also are applying the inflammatory signaling that goes on apply. Uh, and and so when we look at this, um, you know, you're you're painting a picture right now. Now I know you're much more proactive. You're off all your supplements, but let's take a look at what your uh, your symptoms actually show. Now, the, a couple little clues here that are interesting is that you have bad breath and that you also have some um, right-sided uh, discomfort under your rib cage. So the whole um, liver, gallbladder, uh, and distension is going on. And that's something that we're thinking, you want to start thinking about as well. You're, you're, you're starting to add up like a, a, a MED-S case, like metabolic syndrome. So for metabolic syndrome, it's pre-hypertensive, but you're actually hypertensive, pre-diabetic, and, uh, you know, categorized would be obese, but you're kind of not quite obese, but you're gain you've, you've gained weight, and the way your eating patterns are, and the way you respond to, you know, getting headaches that are relieved by food, that shows you're very dysinsulinemic, meaning that your blood sugars aren't really being regulated. And the number, you know, the big thing that causes plaquing in your arteries, of course, is blood sugar dips, and rises, uh, so it's hyperglycemia, and uh, so that's what you're putting, you know, your body's being put at risk at. So let's go to your report, 
and see how this scores out. So, you know, there's five major areas, Patrick, of concern for your body. So you've got, we have, there's five triads or five centers of influence on your body. So each one of them has kind of a, a meaning and a purpose for how you're going to perform. If you look at your questionnaire, the higher the score, the more either the symptoms that you wrote down or the labs that were drawn for you are adding up to create an imbalance in your body. So when you look at your cardiopulmonary and neurovascular score, it's at 790. It's actually showing us that that's the top area of concern for your health. And it kind of makes sense because your blood pressure is still up, your heart rate is still up, you're not sleeping at night. That's all the neurovascular and kind of cardio endothelial complex, meaning how your vessels are working, how you're responding to duress. Uh, and, and so this is scoring at the top of the, of the heap. And it's because the, the two triads below it, meaning that your adrenal thyroid pancreas, which is your triads of how you make energy, how you respond to stress, how you, how you burn fats, how you regulate blood sugar. So, so triad one is your, you know, it's how you make energy. Triad two is kind of how you take in nutrients and how your body responds uh, in, in terms of your immuno, immunologic drive. So, when triad one and triad two are both really high, meaning that you've got a lot of stress, your blood sugars are, are trending high, your thyroid hormone is a little off, uh, you know, and you're medicated for thyroid right now, um, and also that the immune system and sleep disturbances are running really strong. When both of those are running high, it shifts your risk as those problems are, are loading up in your body to this third triad, the cardiopulmonary neurovascular triad. So it, it's the old story, and you could ask any, you know, I think, you know, you could ask any of the docs, people that are under chronic stress that have blood sugar fluctuations and smoke and their thyroid goes low, unmedicated, tend to end up as vascular paths. You know, they end up with their, you know, their, cardiometabolic risk going up. And, and so, you know, we're going to want to jump on this right away. Of course, relatively speaking, when you look at your liver, lymph, kidney, and testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, those readings are really low in comparison. If you looked at the top three, the top three are almost identical in scoring. And for me, most likely what I would do, you know, I'll show you how I would uh, do this, is I, I'm going to work on the top two triads with you, and I'm going to change your diet around for, for getting the gut under control, but I'm going to mainly focus on just working on these first two triads to make a difference in your, in your health. So, it's interesting because so my cortisol step, pattern... Well, your cortisol it's pattern is a flattened... Yeah, you have a, we're going we're gonna to get to that. You have a flattened cortisol curve, and flattened cortisol curves are the single most predictive uh, number that you can you can pull out for future cardiometabolic risk. So I'm just saying it's interesting. I've always curve, been in range. I've always been in range for the cortisol pattern, which is interesting, even though it appears flattened out, which I've never talked about. But my cortisol patterns always appeared to be within range. Yeah, but they're flattened. So you have your morning cortisol response is low. So when you look at your cortisol curve, it's flat. And a flattened cortisol curve, more than any other single thing you look at, is associated with future cardiometabolic risk. So it's actually playing out that because your sleep pattern is disturbed and your cortisol curve is off now, that's creating this change in your cardiometabolic wiring. So harder to get your blood pressure under, under control, your heart rate, uh, you, know, you know, tends to, you know, be too high. And, and that's because you know, you've lost what's called your diurnal pattern for cortisol. The morning high, dropping in the afternoon, dropping in the evening. And even though you're in range at your nighttime cortisol, Patrick, your nighttime cortisol is high. And I've got that. I want to talk about that when we get to the graph so that, so that people will see it. But when you look no, at it, because it's interesting. When I have a good night's sleep, my blood pressure is lower, and I I do feel better the next night, next day. 
There you, you go. I promise most nights I just get a terrible night's sleep. Exactly. And that's what, you know, the, one of the first things we're going to do with you, Patrick, is work on your sleep. We're going to work on your stress response, work on your sleep, work on, um, I'm going to do some breathing technique, actually. I'm going to get you situated with doing a, a uh, heart math, kind of remapping your vagal tone so that we start to retrain your nervous system while we're actually u using different nutrients that are going to dampen your stress response. The biggest mistake people make on trying to get a good night's sleep is they just take stuff at night. So, you know, you, when you're under a lot of stress like you are, you know, you're running a company, you're busy, you're creative, uh, you have to dampen your stress response all day long and then give something for sleep. And you, it doesn't mean you're not going to be creative. It just means you're going to be more calm. You know, you won't feel as much anxiety and panic loading in the night. So it's really, you know, so you know intuitively if you get a good night's sleep, you feel way better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, so this is a, you know, um, so to give people relevance, anything over 500 means it's meaningful. So when you have 700s, it's a significant shift that needs attention. The only caveat I'm making here is that because triad one and triad two are both really high, it's driving triad three. And Doreen, just if you, since you're online and we are doing this for education, Doreen, how often do you see this pattern end up being exactly like I expressed it, where the adrenals and thyroid and blood sugar disruptions, uh, along with the immune system regulation issues, ends up driving cardiometabolic risk in people? Is this, 100%. It, it's almost, right? It's always. So, so you just, this is a, you know, fortunately, uh, Patrick, I'm glad we're doing this uh, with you because I think we've caught on to a really, uh, some great things on the front side. We're going to be able to help you. So let's go to the next page. So if I had to say to you, Patrick, how do you feel? Like, how well are you? The whole purpose of the metabolic code vitality index is to say, how far are, is Patrick away from being well? And, and so right now, according to our readings, you're, you're not feeling the best that you could feel. And in fact, if you were honest, you, you, you probably would say, you know what? I get through my days because I, I've got a very strong mind. Is that accurate or no? Very true. Yeah, because if you just relied on how you felt, yeah, you listed out of 167 possible questions. I, I actually added them up. This is kind of outside of the, you know, the, the, uh, the what I would do with a with a patient. But you answered yes to 45 out of 167 questions. So you have a lot of symptoms that you're living with every day, but it's your passion that drives you through your day. What what we really want to do is start to make that passion translate into how well you can feel. So when you when you feel great. That means that you know you don't have to just rely on passion anymore. You can you can rely on efficiency in your body to help you get through your day, and you can think more clearly and sleep better and not feel as panicked, and your digestion is better. These are the, so in this particular page, this is just showing how far are you away from really being at your peak, because all of these risks are are just different risks based on your lab values. How quickly. Yeah, how quickly you'd be aging, what your cardiometabolic efficiency <laughs> is, how good you're going to keep your brain intact. That's so each one of these areas is just showing you know, what, what's your area of efficiency. So the next step is just looking at your lab values. And so if you look at this, uh, Patrick, actually what I would say is you always see people who drive themselves really hard. You're kind of now on the backside of uh, being an incredibly hard worker. So your morning cortisol has tanked, so it's very low, and the, your other cortisols are actually all low. So this is kind of that flattening out and losing some of your cortisol drive, which is, which is actually indicative of when you start to say, hey, I'm losing a little bit of my memory. And um, this is when you lose sympathetic tone because because you're because you've retrained your nervous system basically and that's why the your heart rates up but yet you don't quite have the drive anymore to to regulate your morning and night pattern for your for your cortisol so 
uh, pretty, pretty, you know, significant. I mean, what is holding in here? Uh, you know, your DH is, you know, it's trending low. Um, your CM level is, is actually holding in. So you have a lot of resiliency to you. Uh, if you look at your thyroid, now were you on, on your thyroid? Did you take your thyroid the morning of the lab test? I've been off thyroid as well. The only thing I was on since November was the testosterone and the bisphalic. All okay, the other so armor that I was on and everything else was off. So, we're, so you know, yeah, we have to look into, you know, because you, know, you, you haven't been on uh, your thyroid hormone. Your free T3 is kind of high. Uh, it's out of bounds. And, yes, there's some variability to it, but you are reporting that your heart rate is elevated. So we're going to have to figure out how we can start to get that, uh, get your thyroid hormones to start to harmonize a little bit better. And we've got some suggestions on what to do there. Uh, and then if you look at your uh, numbers related to the pancreas, your blood sugar at 95 means you have a 60% risk of being a diabetic in the next decade. So your, so your blood sugars are trending high. Your hemoglobin A1C is trending high. Even though it's still in green, um, it's above normal. Uh, and then your IGF-1 is trending low. So, you know, this would be, uh, you know, IGF-1 is a, is a reflection of growth hormone. And so there's opportunities to try to help bring that up uh, just to help in terms of your resiliency, uh, in terms of healing, recovery, aging. Um, and, there, and there's some interesting things you can do for that, of course. So you can, you know, you can consider things like samoralin if you, if, if, if you want. Um, and then potassium is at 4.1. So usually when potassium is dropping out like this, it's because you're spilling it because your blood sugar's off. So, you know, and your blood sugar uh, at fasting is too high and your hemoglobin A1C is a little elevated. So you're going to spill potassium, spill magnesium, and, and actually hold on to sodium a little bit. Uh, and so, and why this is important, of course, is that, you know, potassium is also a predictor for future diabetes risk, but also really important in terms of electrolytes. And you're kind of you're trending low there. So do you get muscle cramps at all, Patrick? Yes. You do get muscle cramps. Yeah. You can kind of yeah, tell. I mean, my hand my hand will cramp up and just go into like a spasm. Yeah. So that so potassium on you is is kind of low normal, and then your magnesium was kind of low normal as well, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, if we look here. Even though gut immune brain came up really high on you, Patrick, but when we look through the questionnaire. A lot of it had to do um, with the brain and sleep pattern problems. And then, of course, your homocysteine was elevated. But, you know, even though your, if you look at your gut readings, your C-reactive protein is a little bit elevated, your, uh, and then your eosinophils and monocytes, that's showing that your immune system is starting to get chronically cranked up a little bit because those numbers are just trending a little bit. So, when you're insulin resistant and you're a smoker, you know, smokers have higher CRPs, smokers activate their immune system more, uh, it tends to create a little bit of ground state inflammation, and that's what this is showing. But in your case, this would probably be the next stage of work I would work on. We would work on your gut after we get your nervous system under control. And when we look at the cardiovascular network, your LDLs are at almost 160. Uh, your blood pressure at 130 over 85 medicated and your heart rate at 87, all of these, because you're medicated and these numbers are elevated and you're reporting sleep disturbances and, and all the other things that have added up in, in the report, that's why all these points are kind of shoving in this direction. So, so you, uh, Patrick, you, on the headaches, do you ever do your blood pressure during the day to kind of see how your head, you know, what's going on with your blood pressure, or do you just kind of take your pill and? No, I know okay? my blood pressure elevates during the day because my staff often looks at me and asks me why I'm so flushed and so red. Oh, okay. And if I would, if I were to pull my blood pressure, then I know I'm like sitting 150 over like 95. Yeah. So we, so we really, you know, one of the areas we really have to focus on. Look, it's easy to say this, Patrick. It's easy because it's real popular and you know, quote, kind of integrative or functional or whatever medicine. We're going to start on your gut. But the reality is we really have to get your blood pressure under control. You know, we've got to get your blood pressure under control and your nervous system under control because those things are life-threatening. You know, if, you're, if you get a little bit of bloating and distension, we can work on that with your diet, drop some weight, help your blood pressure to come down. But it's really uh, what the report has done a great job of doing 
it's really showing us where the big alarm is for you. And, and you, know, you said it beautifully, you know, your blood, you, you know your blood pressure, you feel it going up in the day, you do get headaches, you do get you know, buzzing in your ears, um, you're medicated for your blood pressure and yet your heart rate's still too high and your thyroid's still kind of stuck at that high uh, T3, which might be contributing to that pulse rate of yours. So we got to figure these things out a step at a time. Uh, now let's look here. You, it, for your liver, your, uh, your mean corporate volume is high and your red cell width is high. So the, what I take out of uh, the liver readings for you is that your homocysteine was high. You need B6, B12, and folate, and probably some B2. So you need B vitamins to help regulate your homocysteine. But more importantly, your red blood cells are too wide. The volume's too big. So you can't really carry oxygen to your brain the way you're supposed to, and you can't get it into the periphery like you're supposed to. And that's kind of what starts to set up problems like peripheral vascular disease when free radical damage or the rate of rusting is in your peripheral arteries and microcapillaries. And, and when you can't get the oxygen to your brain, that is what triggers a lot of oxidative damage and triggers endothelial dysfunction. Now, you do have something working against you, over and above that is, you know, you smoke. So when you're a smoker, you're going you're gonna to tend to trigger more endothelial damage. But for you, it kind of doubles because you're, you're, you, know, you don't have red, you know, red blood cells that are the right size. So you're so, saying my family history of vascular dementia, heart attacks, and, and, uh, um, and uh, high glucose levels doesn't help either. Are all they're all playing out for you right now. <laughs> it's what's mm -hmm. actually. And, but all this, I mean, I firmly believe, Patrick, that um, all this it is changeable, that you can really, you can You need to stop this. smoking. There you go. <laughs> Man, I love these group discussions. That's exactly right. And you're being, you're being straightforward on it. That's not on. Hey, at least I was entirely honest about my questionnaire, guys. Yeah, Patrick? I'm, I'm, you know what? You've got, I don't know how many people are on this line, but I bet every last one of us have got us, you know, we got our arms around you now, man. We're going to make sure you succeed. So, so, uh, so anyway, you understand that the, with your liver, your re the red blood cells you're making um, aren't really the most efficient ones to help you to nourish your body. So it's because you can't carry oxygen. They're too big and you can't carry toxins away. So that's the big thing there. Um, your white blood cell count is elevated, um, and that's uh, a big issue. And in fact, I, you know what another big issue is? I have to turn. I have to plug my uh, laptop in, guys. I'm on four <laughs> percent. There we go. <laughs> I now, your white blood cell count, Patrick, in lymph. Your white blood cell count at eight point three. Range, family history of blood glucose, I'd be watching your white blood cell count because for me that's a little bit too high at baseline. Um, and so that's just a note. I mean, it'd be, it'd be something we'd want to watch together. Now, let's take a look at your kidneys. You know, and actually, you know, the kidney points, you're, you're, you're pretty decent here. I mean, just, and I'm a little surprised that the, you know, the kidneys are holding up great. That, that, that's okay. And then let's go here and look at, so your testosterone is, uh, your total is out of bounds. Now, here's where this gets a little off. We should discuss this while you get while everybody's on here, so they understand. We have to create a range, and if it's above the range, I know some of you have different ranges on what you think are good or not. But if we're going to create this report, you're just you know you're just going to have to explain to people if they're right at the top range and you want them there because of the way they are. Curve of people. This is showing. Your testosterone's great, Patrick. You, you, you know, you really, what's interesting is this kind of brings up the real value of what you're doing now um, with, this, with, with, with what we're going to, you know, implement. Is it, you're being well with your testosterone, right? I mean, you feel pretty okay. Like, I look at your estrogens. You know, you're not making a ton of estrogen. Your estradiol is up a little bit. But, I mean, when you, when you look at it, your estrogen loads up a little bit. But relative to your test, it's not bad. But I think we kind of get this thought that if we get that testosterone dialed in, that means we're going to be healthy. 
and you kind of this is at the bottom of your concern. You have all these issues that are really need met. You know, you need medical management. You have vascular issues. Uh, you do have you know nervous system issues that are, that are you know. Jim, you're breaking up a bit. Can we get right. closer to the microphone, please? Jim, you're breaking up a little bit. I can't hear you. After so your, your symptoms, at 540 and 515, 390, the biggest symptoms you have are, are one. Hang on, everybody. I'm texting Jim right now to see whether or not he can get back online. All right, so Doreen, over to you. <laughs> uh, my my concern, Patrick, for you would be to make sure that you get your sleep apnea addressed because the intermittent waking up or the deoxygenation that's occurring is stimulating your sympathetic nervous system, which is driving that imbalance in your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So yeah, I, I think I have a mild case of sleep apnea, but I don't think it's dramatic. It doesn't um, matter. I, well, the thing is that when I wake, I wake because of either um, either extraordinarily bad dreams, so I'm usually in a very deep sleep, or I wake um, and I notice right after I wake I have intense um, surges of anxiety. I don't know what it is, but it's like, you know, a lightning bolt going through my system. Yeah. But I'm not waking from a fact of lack of snoring. And Max would tell you that I, well, I do snore. I haven't, I don't snore dramatically lately. Um, it's really more related to probably higher blood pressure at night, laying flat, um, mm -hmm. severe dreams, or um, these anxiety things that hit me that wake me up like lightning bolts running through my body. Well, that's why uh, taking, you know, switching your blood pressure medicine and taking your blood pressure medicine in the evening, because the most important prognostic indicator of myocardial infarction is nighttime blood pressure. I didn't so, know that. I was told to take the BP medicine in the morning. No, 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 no. If your blood pressure is high at night, then your parasympathetic nerve, then your sympathetic nervous system is on overdrive, and your parasympathetic nervous system, which should the predominant system is not, not working. So your renin-angiotensin system, which is why an ACE inhibitor or an ARB would be better for you, but, but getting you to sleep and calming the CNS inflammation, if uh, Ken Orbeck is on the line, he can chime in. Calm, calming the CNS inflammation is going to be absolutely key to getting you better. Giving you cardiac supplements and all of that is not going to make you better. Yeah, I, I, I have to, I have to feign a, some level of ignorance because I really don't understand. I mean, I work with you guys all the time, and I would love to have a discussion with people on, you know, correlated causal statistics. But I don't understand everything that I am often told. Um, I uh, do of know that. <laughs> I mean, I know you're, that you're asleep. My, your sleep apnea may improve if you get off the beta block and get on a, a more up-to-date, modern uh, blood pressure control, like an ACE with a mild diuretic. No, no diuretic. The other thing is, the no other diuretic. Thing is, he, 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 no, you're wrong. Six point no, you're wrong. GTC is the best. Well, well what, I, what, I, what I do right now is I also, take, uh, sleep, what it, guys? giving up alcohol will clear it. Actually, what I, bistolic, bistolic is a very, very good, bistolic and carvedilol are the two beta blockers that have been shown to increase nitric oxide and to alter endothelial dysfunction. So those are the only two blood pressure medicines that have been approved and have been shown in documented studies. Now, the most recent trial that's come out has shown indapamide or chlorthalidone to be a much better diuretic than hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide offers nothing to blood pressure control. And in reality, great. And in reality, what you need is to calm your renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. That's going to be the key. 
that's the sleep mechanism. That's your sympathetic nervous system that's on fire out there. So I agree, and if Jim would get back on the line, because we can't move any of this forward, the key is, number one, to get you to sleep and to, and to calm your brain. Those are going to be the two most important parts when you oh, look I'd, at this. I'd agree with that. I mean, <laughs> to uh, be able to sleep, I mean, actually, probably one out of seven nights I get seven hours in a row, but most nights are I'm totally exhausted by 10 and I'm awake by 2. Yeah, and so that's what hey, you're driving. Jim, thank God you're <laughs> back. We can't move anything. <laughs> Oh my about. God! I, I don't know what happened, guys. I mean, it's like everything died, and then I, 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 holy crap! So anyway, let's do, let's let's go back. Doreen, I know you've been explaining this to, to Patrick. Um, let me move oh, this thing forward. Listening? Have you been listening? No, I have not. Oh, Jim, I, we I just talked about. I went on the telephone. Okay, we just did sympathetic, parasympathetic, and working on sleep, and that thing. That's all we talked about. Right. So, so, so as we go through, you guys can see. You still, you can still see my screen. I'm hoping. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, just getting back to this. So you'll, so you, so the balance show up with these triads. And so, as someone gets better, those arrows drop off, the values drop off, the numbers get lower, and people see progress. And we can. We can calculate percentages of improvement. We really should show people how they're doing based on all these different ways that we've layered the data, you know, the numbering, all those types of things. So that's pretty much what that does. Now, Patrick, if you have any questions on lab values, um, you can read through any of, the, of this portion of the report, and it will explain to you what each one of those lab values are. So after you leave the office, so if you're in my office, I can say to you, after you leave my office, if you have any questions and you don't remember what cortisol is, all you have to do is look at the report. You can look it up, and we can, and it'll refresh your memory as to why we're focusing on stress and cortisol and sleep and these other lab values that have shifted. So, and you know, we and, and it's really been a resource, just so it is a feedback loop, guys. I mean, I've been going to doctor's offices and running these reports and watching them do these uh, reports, and the patients love them because they, they leave there and they actually read them, and they kind of start to understand what you're actually trying to accomplish for them. So, uh, so the, I'm just going to go through here, Patrick. You can read these at your discretion. Uh, but I want to get to what's next is, which is the product, because yours, uh, you know, you probably had the most product recommended of any report I've ever seen so far, <laughs> and I want to explain why. Uh, and, and, and you know what, but honestly, Patrick, it's because it, it's all of the things that are, were coming together in your world uh, colliding, and so if I do five years out, let's say we don't <coughs> if, if, if you do anything about your health. But five years out doesn't look so pretty. Um, so that's why we want to, you know, we're going to get on it right away. So here's your cortisol, your urinary cortisol pattern uh, that mapped out. So you can see how that morning is dipped. And did you move your screen? My screen is kind of flat. Jim? Jim, did you move your What's screen? Because my screen's frozen. Did you move your screen? Because my screen's frozen. Uh, I did move my screen. I did move my screen. I think we're all still looking at the testosterone page. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll, maybe it's going to catch up. Let's see. So you mean testosterone? Uh, the um, explanation of testosterone? Yeah, I'm still looking at lab results T5, which is page 11. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, how do I refresh this? Libby. <coughs> well, the good news is that okay. you know, we, we did send out the reports to everybody, so if they actually can pull up the reports that were sent to them, they'll actually see the flattened out. Okay. Well, well if, if they want to know, we're on page twenty. We're on page twenty-five of the report. 
the only difference that you sent out that I sent out is that you sent me your blood pressures and heart rate today, and so we added it in, and it shifted the scores to where cardiopulmonary went from uh, number three to number three one. Three to one, yeah. So I just felt in that that because of your heart rate and because of your blood pressure, it added more points to the to the scoring. And <laughs> Doreen, I think you'll find that pretty incredible that we added those two variables. And when you see the the picture here, uh, Docs, you it it literally took that data and shifted the order of the priority to that uh, you know cardiopulmonary, which where it's where it should be. It should be at number one. Uh, and so if you look at page twenty five, you see flattening of the cortisol curve. Your morning cortisol is way too low, and then you don't really have a good slope the rest of the day. It just kind of flattens out. You end up too high at night. Uh, so even though uh, on the report you're kind of you know, low, then you're kind of in normal the rest of the day, it's the way that it's configured because you're at the very high end, you know, kind of higher end normal with your night cortisol. And... And so you don't really just continue to drop like you're, you know, appropriately supposed to. So this is a great learning tool for you, Patrick. And then the next thing is, is okay, what do I do about it? So, so for you, this is, I mean, absolutely. Most people, all five triads fit on one page. In your case, all five triads took two pages. All right, but you're having trouble sleeping. You're anxious. Your blood pressure is elevated. Your lipids are off. Your endothelium is off. You have a, a MTHFR gene sniff, uh, and your morning cortisol is low. So, if you look at the the, the suggestions, alpha lipoic acid to help regulate your blood sugar and to help with free radical damage makes a lot of sense. CoQ10 is because of the medication that you're on. Uh, the two next things, this is where, uh, if I'm talking to you, Patrick, does the cough you have really bother you? The pretty, it means the bother you in the morning when you first get up, and it, it, does, does your throat, you clear your throat a lot during the course of the day? Not really. Not too bad? I probably would hold off on giving you the, the cough syrup then, the ginger cough syrup to act as an expector. And if it's just something that's occasional, as we clean up your chemistry, I think you'll see that that cough will go down, especially as you're going to, you know, suggest, as we suggested, you know, my, stopping my coughing is, um, yeah, my coughing is often, do, do my coughing is often due to a constant post-nasal drip. Yeah, and so, you know, that brings up this whole point of because you had a constant post-nasal drip and because you answered a lot of questions on triad 2, meaning your gut immune brain, that, 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 that a lot of sinus problems are related to gut health. And so what we're going to do to start is we'll get you on an elimination diet. So we're going to get you off of foods you're allergic to, um, start to count your carbs, uh, and, and that's going to be step one. Because we're going to be busy right now getting your magnesium pool built up, getting your um, uh, adding in aged garlic extract, which is great even in people with resistant hypertension. Uh, and, you know, three studies have come out showing aged garlic extract helps with resistant <laughs> hypertension. Uh, so it's going to remodel the endothelium. It's going to be very helpful and beneficial for remodeling the, the inner lining of your arteries and help your blood pressure to. Uh, to start to settle in. Um, and then, of course, uh, it, it's deciding what's the right adrenal support to use because you kind of are in a mixed bag. You're not high enough in the morning, and you're and, and even in midday, you're kind of not that high, but you ramp up at night, so you almost have an inverted cortisol curve. Uh, what what we're suggesting is, is that you take Adrenavide, and then in addition to that, uh, you take something for your nervous system of, the Laura in it, and that's down here at, at the next uh, page. And then the next thing, and by the way, by Jim, Laura, which Jim, Jim, yeah, Jim. By the way, the, your screens are moving again. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Let me let Thanks. me show you guys the cortisol curve real quick. That since we're online and we're doing this for a teaching tool, it's just take a little more time. But I think we should show it just so they know what it looks like. So this is kind of your urinary uh, cortisol profile and how it maps out. 
And as you can tell, Pastor, and I, would, like I, I said, and I will tell you one you thing, can, Jim. Can, I, I've, I've done my cortisols every four months on both urine and, and saliva for like four years. My cortisol curve, that is the newest one even on urine that's been that low. Mine has always been higher, but again, it might correspond to the other, like like newer symptoms I've had the last three or four months. That's like exactly not being right, able to remember Patrick. crap. Right. No, no, that's exactly right. At one point, your cortisol flattens out, and this is when your heart rate goes up. This is when your metabolic risk goes up or your blood pressure goes up. Um, you know, so, so we're kind of catching you right at this transition point or inflection point with your physiology. That's actually what's going on. I mean, you, 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 you make this transition to where your chemistry starts to really devolve, and that's kind of what this is, you know, this flattening of the curve with the higher, if you look at the end of it, you're, you're kind of close, you're, you're midway on your, your number at night, and it'd be better if that was coming downward more, uh, obviously. So, so for you, let me get back to here. The big things that we need to do are work on your stress response, getting you to sleep, start to remodel your vascular network a little bit. Uh, and so alpha lipoic acid, CoQ10 because of depletion. I mean, I like red yeast rice because of what it's going to do for remodeling uh, your, your uh, lipids a little bit. We didn't do an NMR lipo profile on you, but I, I could see where I'd change your diet first and wouldn't give the culture. And this is where you have an option as, you know, if you're the doc and you're listening here, you could go, you know what, I think I'm going to hold off on that see how they do on a diet. Uh, but in general, you're going to say, I want you to do the green product. And then the brown is adrenal support, chromium for blood sugar, get the DHEA pull up because it was low normal, and then use the multivitamin that works for uh, blood sugar support. And then the, the, the last is the Laura and, uh, and using something to get your thyroid, that T3, to come down. So the mitochore to help that. I would wait on, you can choose, if you, know, you want to work on gut, you could, you could go for gut as well. But for the most part, work on thyroid adrenal pancreas balance, knock down the, get and uh, start, and, and then, you know, track weight loss. Probably somebody like Patrick, if you can get them back in and check them in two months to see how their blood pressure is, because it's a little different if they're coming to you and they're doing this as well. It might not be a bad idea, but otherwise, you're going to track them, you know, over four months, and they're going to be reporting back to you what my blood pressure is, what my weight's like, how's my energy, am I sleeping better, uh, and and so that you know, so you stop at those first two triads. Now, if you want to add more meaning, hey, I want to burn off your estrogen because I think your total estrogens are a little up. That's, your, you know, once again, you, that's uh, your prerogative. You might decide that by breaking their insulin resistance and straightening out his cortisol response that uh, Patrick's estrogens might fall in line a little bit better. So, so that actually kind of, you know, the thing I wanted to get across, this is his, I mean, I'm being honest, guys. Patrick's case is probably one of the most complicated ones that I've seen, uh, you know, in recently uh, overall. But part of it's because he stopped using his med or his nutrients. The other part of it is there's been changes. Patrick's mentioning, I, hey, I've seen changes these last four months, and the cortisol curve is matching it, the biometrics are matching it, and now the labs are starting to match it. Now that took about 45 minutes with all the disruption and not me being on board. It's going to take you about, for the average person, it takes about 25 minutes to go through this, maybe 20. Um, top 30, you know, if you're interviewing the patient and you're giving them the report. It, it's not a long event. I just, I'll just show them this, Patrick. Then we're going to talk about it. Is Just so you guys know, all the stuff that I just talked to him about, he has a handout to read on all of it. So go ahead, Patrick. I'm sorry. No, like like I said, it, you know, being a patient of Dr. Jeff for 12 years, I mean, I will say I did I wasn't on many of the adrenal products, but I was on the cortisone, I was on the omegas, I was on the 
CoQs, I was on multivitamins. I had, you know, I was on two grams of armor. So obviously I probably did this to myself in many ways, but I wanted to see a baseline. But it's also kind of me, well, first and foremost, I love the report. It doesn't surprise me that my hormones are balanced. I mean, that's really what, right. you know, I've been focused on for 12 years, but it's the other effects that have more recently started to, you know, display themselves with the anxiety, the, the sleep disruption, um, this constant feeling of, like, having different parts of my body drip, <laughs> as it were. Um, you know, are things that, you know, for me looking at it, it's like, okay, so i got to take all the green and the blue products, or, or green and brown. That makes sense. Right. What I really like right. is your suggestion that even on the private label body logic and B products, I'm going to put, you know, each of the different triads on the product. So it makes more sense to me as a patient, um, reminding me why I'm taking that thing. That's exactly right. Is that the more you can reinforce, I'm taking the blue, I'm taking the green, um, you know, and it's because they get these handouts that explain what the green is, what are the brown, you know, supplements. It really helps reinforce why they're doing things. And the fact that they're feeling better, and I hope they're going to be feeling better, which they, they should be. So what I'm going to ask you to do, Jim, is you're going to send me a list of the supplements that you absolutely want me on. Uh, one, we're going to do a retest. You also mentioned you wanted to put me on a specific diet, which I know we don't have for all the body lets you doctors yet, but at some point will. But the uh, Correct. elimination diet. And then we're going to start that right, right away. And then I'm going to reschedule for this, and we'll do a recast in four months. That's right. Yeah, and we'll do, and we'll, once again, we'll go through. It's a little bit different because we've got everybody here. Uh, and I wanted to stop and get, make some explanations, but Patrick, we'll recap this so you succinctly know, you know, what it is you're do, what it is you're doing, uh, and maybe we'll even record that one again. But we kind of had the, this 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 first time with everybody on board. I wanted to you know, did, did want to have uh, shell shock. Yeah, I really like to, maybe I can set out to the doctors, you know, the list of supplements, in fact, you know, not only the supplements, but beyond the diet of my stomach. Jeff had me on, you know, two grams of armor. He had me on DHEA. He has me on recommended smolin, um, a lot of different aspects. So we'll be able to combine those all together with what you're recommending. Absolutely. And then we'll come back and look at it. Jim, is the lifestyle portal part of this? We're, we're uh, working through all that with Patrick. He's reviewed uh, a, a new life health portal. We've been, we've been working on it. Don't let me get out of the bag. But we're, we've got a whole um, program that we're working on for all that. Yeah. Okay. I just did. I'm sorry. Ah, no so, Doreen, it's, it's, a, it, it's a great question. We're going to be bringing it in in phases. The one thing is that, you know, like Jim says, we're excited about, you know, they're running 300 reports a month right now. But, I mean, with a couple thousand reports with 65 educated doctors. I mean, we want the feedback. I know Jim wants the feedback so we can like Absolutely. look at the structure of the report. This report has already been changed just by a few doctors looking at my report I sent out and how how, they're, or, how Jim's ordering the supplements and putting the, you know, the greens together, the blues and all that kind of stuff. So big part is going to be getting feedback, but yeah, we're going to be working on some really neat stuff on lifestyle portal, on some uh, patient portal applications that stuff that they brought to us that are like, okay, this is going to finally work for a diet program for body logic MD. Right. And I, and I, I, I'm, I, all I want to, I just want to emphasize, I mean, I've only run several hundred of these reports and have worked people up like this. I know a lot of you guys know for a lot of years. And by the way, 20A and 20B, um, I know that there's a group uh, discount available now for uh, Patrick I believe you worked that for the body logic MD doc so you know half price you know 1250 yeah. I think for, for, for yeah, if they for, sign up for, for this uh, year module. yeah if they sign up during this year body logic MD doctors will be able to do 20A and 20B for for 50 percent off for a thousand two fifty rather than the normal 2500 yeah that's fantastic and, and the like once again guys the big thing is just if, if you listen to all of Patrick's signs, symptoms, all of the all the different things that were going on, the triad did end up picking up between the biometrics, the lab data, and his subjective survey. It did rank him where he needed to be, um, and it'll be close. You're all you know smart docs. You're at the tops in the in, you know in, in the field. I know, but it's just a tool to help you get there quicker and understand where that person's at. Um, so that, that, that's the real purpose of it. And then develop what, what's the right rationale so that the patient can remember all the great stuff you tell them, now the report tells them. 
Uh, is there anything else, Patrick, you wanted me to go over? No, I don't think so. Is there any questions from the physicians? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. On, can you go to the page where you have the supplement recommendations? Got it. So under your adrenal supplement, you're recommending Adrenavive, which is typically, I mean, it contains phosphatidylserine, and it's typically the supplement that I use to drop cortisols. And I'm just curious why the report chose to use something that would drop cortisols in somebody that has a, a problem with low cortisol. Well, because why is but his low cortisol is because he's been over revved, and what, when you really use phosphatidylserine, what you're trying to do is you're trying to dampen cortisol response. You're, you know, so so what we're doing is you're giving them this in the evening in particular, so you can try to start to get that cortisol to come down. And uh, in the morning, because he says he, he panics and it's, you know he's got a lot of this panic that loads pretty quickly, uh, that you're, you're using you have to try to buffer basically the amygdala. Um, you could decide, look, you know, uh, you, know um, you could decide, you know what, I don't, I don't want to give that one. I want to give something different based on my clinical knowledge. So you could say, and, and why we have court, you know, adrenal cortisol in here, just straight adrenal cortex, as we're trying to dampen the stress response but build a little bit of the adrenal reserve back at the same time. You might say, hey, look, I want to give ashwagandha. I or I want to give, I mean, you probably don't want to give straight adrenal extract, right, and a guy that's, you know, like this because he's already sympathetic dominant. So, you know, but you may decide, hey, I just want to give the, you know, the dampening because even though his cortisol curve is a little off, He's sympathetic dominant. His heart rate's up. His blood pressure's up. You, you, you really don't want to give him a lot of via the tiger. No, yeah, I just didn't know. It, it, so what I would probably normally do is just give some adaptogenic support and then throw some yeah, there you go. steering in at night. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. That's what's nice about this is you're able to adjust it. So that's, that's a totally, um, totally rational way to look at it. You know, I, I think... You, you, once again, depending on what the um, depending on what the experience level is of a practitioner, too, you, you, you may go in here and say, "Yeah, you know what? I like this, but I don't like that." Uh, so I'm not going to give that. But it's, it's just starting to give a guideline for you. You can put in, uh, you know, you'll be able to select other adrenal products instead of this, uh, you know, right out of the list. So you you're, you're, you're not. What, we want, what I don't want you to think is, is that, hey, this is the way you have to do it. It's here are the things to consider now based on your level of experience, just like what you stated. You might go, hey, I think I want to use an adaptogen in the morning and, and then see how their blood pressure plays out. But if his blood pressure is trending high end of the day, like he said, it picking up that he, he needs to dampen his stress response because you, you got – because basically what's happening is morning's low, but then he shoots right up to normal, is you're really trying to get him to sleep at night so his cortisol will recorrect, and you're trying to get him to not react and be quite so cortisol dominant when his blood pressure is being up there in the day. But your, your point is absolutely valid, and you could do it that way, 100%. The, the it's, the just, other question, it's just different ways to look at it. Go ahead. The other question is for Patrick. So you, you got Kyolic, which I know is you know, one of your faves. But that's not on a formulary. So is that something that um, that Max can get be. Neutrologics? You actually are going to have I have no idea. Uh, I, I I know the I, I do know this. You don't know this, Patrick. But you know that that uh, can we talk about Tom Shambari yet? About what? Patrick. Tom Shambari. Oh, Tom Shambari. So New Medica is one of the new professional providers that you're going to have at Neutrologic, and it's I'm just I'm just uh, it, it's early to tell you this, but they're going to have there's a new aged garlic extract that uh, is more concentrated that Dr. Budoff had studied at UCLA. He just published his fourth paper on it that showed it regressed plaque, and uh, another study at uh, medical school in Australia showed it reduced blood pressure you're going to actually be the first docs to have that um, when it gets released. So you're going to have this new highly concentrated uh, aged garlic extract that's got human trials on it that are just really strong trials. So 
you will have it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the great benefits, guys, beyond all the stuff you're seeing with the report is working with Jim is we're starting to bring in a couple other really unique manufacturing pharmacy supplements. Um, like we're working right now with New Medica, we're going to pretty soon have uh, – what's the new one, Jim? The uh, <laughs> brain Compounded guy. nutrients. Right. Compounded nutrients. Right. And, exactly. a, and a series of other and, ones and, where and, we see yeah. specialized products. Yeah, and and, for, and what's really going to be, I think it's going to be great, guys, is, you know, I get exposed to a lot of raw materials, stuff like Relora, uh, you know, you know, like aged garlic extract, and, I, you know, I'm going to bring them right into here, and we're going to we're gonna get to play with them before anybody, and uh, it's, it's exciting. But only really good evidence stuff. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, then I'm going to thank Dr. Laval and thank Libby for putting on the uh, seminar for us and everybody that joined. And then we will have this for replay, and Alicia will be sending it out to all the body that are going to be doctors who want to listen to it in the next two days. So everybody have a great night. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick and Laval. Okay. Good night, guys. Thanks, guys. Look forward to working together. It's incredibly exciting.